Hello and welcome to another episode of What's Inside. Today we're looking at this War of Mine board game's um, stretch goals. This is uh, by Ares Games and Awakened Realms, apparently. Uh, I'm not familiar with that company, but it um, doesn't matter. So these are the stretch goals and bonus stuff that's uh, been released for this War of Mine from the Kickstarter. And I thought we could look it over and see what's in there. There's also some other stuff that we're going to go over first. Because what's in here is fairly straightforward. It's mostly cards and minis. But there's also this stuff. Um, this was in the box, so uh thought we'd go over it. Here we've got some tokens. Um, there's a kitty cat. And some other stuff. So, um, we're going to go through all of this real quick and uh, see what we got. I have no idea what this stuff is. And there's no clear way to open this. Alright, so we've got here some sort of uh, map thingy. It's, good. it's a little beat up, probably from uh, at the warehouse, because it was in a big box that was all padded. So I know it didn't happen during shipping, but it's, it's got a little crumple there. This is side A. Uh, let me adjust the camera so we get a better shot of this. Sorry, this is probably the best we're going to get. Um, there's a window next to me and uh, it's got natural lighting so I can't really do much about that unfortunately. This is side A. There's numbers on here. I'm not sure what this is because I haven't played the game yet. But it's pretty decent quality. Uh, it's a little uh, flexible, which I don't like that. But the gloss is real good quality and it's... Um, got reasonable thickness it's a sort of a cardstock sort of thing um, it could have been a lot worse a lot cheaper so let's get that out of the way and go to the next thing uh, there's a little postcard here it's either a postcard or a weird sticker but there's nothing on the back probably just to tell you what the it went for the, you know what the game uh, this is a sealed envelope labeled 317. I don't want to open it because it might be relevant to the game. Um, some mystery thing. Uh, but it, it's here. So. Alright. Then we've got about the stretch goals. This is a little booklet. So it tells us the different things that we've got in this package. Let's see if it references what 317 is. Alright, um, a closed envelope 317. It's a mysterious closed envelope. It can only be opened and used once. We won't tell you what to decide should you decide that the situation is dire and the time has come to make one last desperate effort. Simply tear the envelope open and check out what is inside. Alright, so it's a last ditch effort sort of thing. Um, apparently this thing is labeled as tactics. I don't know what that means, but here we are. Yeah, one's labeled tactics, one's labeled sewers. So it's just some... Ex added on exploration stuff it sounds like all right cool the rest of the stuff seems pretty self-explanatory but 317 is some sort of dire emergency card there's definitely a card in there I can feel it it's it covers most of it from what I can tell so this is a very unique add-on and will probably be difficult to find still sealed so be aware of that, that that exists and is probably going to be very difficult to find. I'm not going to spoil that surprise. I've ruined enough of the game, but other people um, will probably uh, have it on their videos. 
Uh, then we've got another book called uh, The Heart of the City that covers the sewers and orphans of war. Uh, and this is um, an expansion to the script. So there's even more encounters that you can have. Uh, and that's really cool because that really adds more gameplay. And then we've got a little notation thing that um, only you you open only after you've successfully finished the campaign. This is just a little booklet that gives you some more information. And uh, it looks like it's a, from what I can see through, it looks like it's a newspaper of some kind. It's like a bonus. I don't know what any of these Kickstarter bonuses are. Uh, I'm seeing them for the first time too, but this, I can see the word news on here and some headlines. So I imagine this is some sort of like uh, extra bonus thing that tells you a little bit of flavor text or something. I uh, don't know how much gameplay value it's actually going to have, if any, but uh, it, it's, it exists. So I wanted to go, kind of go over those things before we get into the ca extra cards and minis that are included. So, let's move these out of the way and get to the, uh, the stuff most people are concerned about, which is the stretch goals in the box. Now this did not come sealed, so, but this is all the stretch goals. So we've got some dice. Um, looks like an advertisement. It's a deck of cards. Another deck of cards. Ooh. This is that statue that was on the cover of that booklet. And some minis. So that's the rest of the stretch goals. And we'll go over each of these in turn. Uh, Lord of he Hellas, if you don't know, is another Kickstarter they were doing, so this is probably related to that. Um, as sort of an advertisement, but the Kickstarter for that just ended, and it looked pretty good, I'm not going to lie. And after seeing this, I wish I had backed Lord of Hellas. Um, so uh, let me adjust the camera, and we'll get a good look and do all of these in turn. Um, thankfully there's not as many cards as the last box because my voice is still recovering from that. So this probably won't be the two hour epic that one was. In the meantime, uh, hang on a second and we'll see what we got. Alright, so let's start with the dice. These are some slightly fancier dice um, than the box set ones. Honestly, I, I don't see much difference other than they've got goofy little lines around them. There's, um, they're not that upgraded. They're, they're nice. They're just, um, slightly more decorative. The ones in the core box were fine. These are slightly fancier, but honestly, it's nice to have an extra set of dice. Uh, the D10 is not generic now. It's, it's got very, um decorative look to it but honestly uh, the dice that were in there they were fine the only difference is this is a nice it's nice to have an extra set of dice because they are unique and they'd be difficult to replace and you just have to find a blank d6 and mark it up with a marker or something to replace it uh, otherwise the the basic layout looks just like the uh, uh, at least as far as I can remember, it looks like the dice from the the core set. So the layout looks the same. It's just fancier now. So, yeah, I mean, it's nothing particularly f special about it other than it's decorative. Um, but yeah, having an extra set of dice is always good. So, yeah, I'm just going to give you a brief glance at the uh, layout of the dice so that you know where the symbols are. And the D10 is just a decorative D10. So yeah, nothing, nothing to write home about there. They're just fancier dice, which is cool, but completely unnecessary in my opinion. I like dice and all. I like them a lot. I have an abnormally large collection of dice, but 
Um, it's just nice to have the extra set, I think, more than anything. Alright, let's look at this uh, Lord of Hellas box that they give us. And see what's in here. Oh, it's got a mini in it. Well, it's like a cyber minotaur kind of thing. It's, uh, it's actually a pretty cool looking miniature. It's got like the priming that lets have all the like shading effect. Some new technique they're doing. I've heard about it, but I forget what it's called. It's got its own name. I'm sure somebody will tell me in the comments. But it's really cool looking. Um, and there's a little ad here, a little fold out ad that's on really garbage paper. And it says, uh, Dear Backer, we would like to invite you to take part in our exciting new Kickstarter campaign of the game Lord of Hellas. Well, that would have been nice about, you know, two weeks ago. Oh, it's called Sundrop Pre Shade Technology. Uh, but this game looked really freaking cool. Uh, wish I, I really wish I'd backed it because um, I, I was a little hesitant because I wasn't sure about the company. But after seeing this game, I really wish I had gone for it. Uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, takes place with like the Greek heroes and stuff. Looked pretty fun. Uh, and the miniatures are actually really nice size. Uh, I kind of expected them to be a little smaller. But yeah, here's a picture of that. Um, I'm definitely going to pick that game up at some point and we'll do an unboxing on here because I, I think it looks really cool. I just wish I had gotten in on the Kickstarter so I could get all the bonus stuff. And I don't really want to pay a bunch of money for the bonus stuff. But yeah, that stuff was just in this little box. Unprotected. Uh, but it is a little deck box that could be kind of handy. So... It's a nice little deck box, just like any other cardboard deck box. Alright, let's look at these minis. Um, start with the angel statue, which looks kind of cool. Um, this has a real, I don't know, gothy uh, kind of feel. Um, pretty detailed, a little better detailing than their regular minis, I'd say. Uh, but that might just be my opinion. Uh, yeah. It's, the wings look really cool. They're kind of uneven. But I think that's done for effect. Just like most mausoleum type uh, statues would have. Very funerary. Uh, it's pretty nice. Um, not sure the point of it. But it looks really cool. So I guess you could probably use that... It, in other games as like a first player marker or something. I don't know, I just think it looked neat. And these plastic bags are crap. They did cheap out on these plastic bags a little bit. Alright, miniatures. The cat only has a token, but there is a dog uh, miniature, which is pretty cool. Uh, we got some more survivors it looks like are thugs maybe there's a bunch of the same guy here's a soldier another soldier looking guy yeah, so we got three thug looking guys four soldiers some children that's creepy uh, there's a hobo Looking like he's going to shank you. There's another hobo. And a really depressed sad girl. So these must be the ones that are referenced in the cards. Uh, the dog and the kids. That could get a little disturbing for some people. Uh, but you got three thug looking raider types. Four soldier types. Uh, two kids. The dog. The despondent looking woman. And a couple of hobos. So this is probably a desperate visitor. I'm sure we'll see uh, some cards related to this too, if, uh, most likely. Uh, but yeah, this game's a bit of a downer. So if you're, uh, not a kid's game, definitely not. And this could make things a little more depressing. 
But the miniatures look good. They're pretty detailed. Um, not the greatest, not the worst. Definitely um, uh, the detailing probably could have been a little greater, just like I said with the other ones, but not bad. I'd get it for the hobo tokens. But anyway, uh, let's get on to the cards because there's two stacks of them and my voice is already starting to really hurt from filming the other episode. Alright, so we'll look at the blank deck first. So there's some blank cards here. Do, do, no easy open. There, there we go. Alright, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve blank cards. Alrighty. So we got a bunch of little stuff here. whole bunch of cards all right so there's there's several piles here we got three six nine ten different cards other than the blank ones this is just the first pack all right so what we're gonna look at first is the desperate measures cards um, these are obviously just desperate measures so let's get these out of the way so we can kind of focus on the uh, cards we've got all right and these uh, according to the top of the card uh, it says when a character dies or abandons the group draw one desperate measures card keep it and use it at any time as described on its back if more than one character dies or abandons the group at the same time draw one desperate measure card for each of them all right so there are two four six seven of these total if you lose seven people game just call it a game all right first card we have to eat this play during the dusk phase when checking the hunger you may choose to raise each character's misery by one if you do treat them if, as if they just ate raw food after using the card, remove it from the game. Next, wait a minute. Play when a character is about to begin. Uh, choose one character present and roll the black die, comparing the result to their empathy. If the result is equal to or less than the character's empathy, equal, you were able to avoid that combat. If the result is greater than the character's enemy, the opponents perform a backstab before combat. Play when, yeah, right before combat. After using uh, this card, remove it from the game. So, pre combat card, okay. Uh, through the window, play at any time. Resolve one shelter card, furniture, or heap, even if it is not available yet. Uh, example uh, blocked by a rubble, closed door, bars card without spending an action. Roll the black die. One through three, one chosen character suffers two wounds. Um, after using this card, remove it from the game. Alright, next one. Hidden stash. You have discovered a stash of valuable stuff. Play during any crafting in the shelter. Choose one token slash resource type when crafting a fitting card uh, and ignore it. Do not discard any tokens slash resource of that type. Uh, you may choose you may raise one chosen character's fatigue by two to build this fitting immediately during any phase without spending any action. Uh, after using discard of course. All these uh, you remove from the game afterward. So jokes and hopes um, roll the black die and compare the result with the empathy of each character present. If the result is equal to or less than a character's empathy, uh, then lower their misery by two. If the result is greater than a character's empathy, raise their misery by one. 
Don't tell crappy jokes in the post-apocalypse. Great deal. Uh, play during trade. Receive free food with a total value of five. You take the opportunity to steal from the trader. Uh, you may take the opportunity to steal from the trader. Choose one character taking part in the trade. Take additional goods worth a total of ten and roll the black die. If the result is equal to or less than the character's empathy, raise their misery by one. And lastly, stuff of nightmares. Tonight, no one will dare to approach our door. Those blood stains were a real omen. Play at the beginning of the night raid phase. Do not draw any night raid cards during this night raid phase. Additionally, roll the black die and compare the result with the empathy of each character present in the shelter. If the result is equal to or less than a character's empathy, raise their misery by one. Alright, so that's the Desperate Measures deck. Um, included in here is this kid's card. And that's all it is, this two-sided card. Then we've got a new character card. And this is for Emiria. That's the despondent looking woman. Occupation homeless. Zero prowess, five empathy. Quite okay. Once per scavenging with Emiria present, add one vegetable to the findings pile. Spirit, A, habitat. Discard one moonshine or 100% alcohol from the storage or raise Emiria's misery by one. B. If Amiria is hungry, lower her hunger by 1. C. If Amiria is miserable, level 2 or 3, raise her misery by th by 1. She has 3 inventory. Alright, so that's the new character. Uh, new event card. Um... This says a, a little... Uh, add 2 cold space to... Uh, it's too cold to the cold space. It's called Arrival of Local Refugees. There's a little green slash on it that says Farmers. Um, place this card on the findings pile. If any card is already there, remove that card from the game. From now on, during scavenging performed in the far location, add one vegetable to the findings pile. And it's got some new text at the bottom. Alright, so then we've got... Visitors, uh, farmers, two strangers offered to help in exchange for shelter. If you decide to take them in, place two farmer figures in the shelter and keep this card. Each farmer may perform three actions during the day phase just like the characters. Each farmer must eat at least one raw food during the dusk phase, otherwise he leaves. Discard his figure. Each farmer may be sent on guard duty, prowess one. However, if he suffers any wounds, he leaves. Discard this figure. Afterward, shuffle this card back into the visitor's deck. Alright, so these guys are kind of crybaby softies, apparently. Like, oh, I didn't get what I want, blah, 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 I'm leaving. So, aside from being kind of pansies, um, they're useful, at least. Alright, the uh, kids' actions cards. So... Uh, labor laws don't exist during wartime, apparently, uh, for children. So let's see what they, they can do. Reality impact. Something unexpected has happened. Draw another card from the kids' action deck and check the number shown in the corner. Then shuffle the drawn card back into the kids' action deck. Find that no number in the Orphans of War book and resolve the corresponding text. Um, afterwards, remove this card from the game. Alright, so that's basically a draw again sort of thing. Hide and seek. Play at any time. The kids find a hidden stash. Good. Yay. Good job, kid. Add the following token to the storage. Two mechanical parts, two electrical parts, three wood, three components, and a broken guitar. Alright, so they're, they're kind of useful. Now there's six total cards here. So... Let's see what else these kids can do. Uh, nobody's home. During the night raid phase, after drawing a night raid card, 
Ignore wounds from the night raid card as long as the guards do not roll any combat dice to lower the damage. After playing this card, remove it from the game. Look what I've found. Play it any time. The child automatically finds any one yellow, green, gray token you choose. Add it to the storage. After playing this card, remove it from the game. Things are not so bad. Play it any time. Set one chosen character's misery to zero. After playing this card, remove it from the game. Alright, so these kids are pretty useful. I must live for the little one. Play it any time. When a character is about to die during the scavenging phase, set their wounds to three, and the scavenging ends immediately. Choose findings as resolve normally. After playing this card, result, uh, re remove it from the game. Alright, so, hey, those orphans are kind of useful. I thought this would be a lot more depressing. Alright, uh, let's look at some hidden objectives. There are two, four, six of these as well. First up, we've got Thief. Reveal during the evening phase. Choose a character who has no wound or illness token. That character abandons the group. Remove them from the game. Taking any one food token, canned food, raw food, vegetable, one water, and any one weapon from the storage. You must discard these tokens from the, from the storage or this card cannot be revealed. Then remove this card from the game. Oh, uh, the back of the card for Hidden Objective says, At the beginning of the campaign, each player draws one Hidden Objective card. Uh, players should keep this card secret and res reveal it when their Hidden object Objective is fulfilled. If a player cannot fulfill their Hidden Objective by the end of the campaign, this player loses the game no matter how the campaign ends. Now, this is like the traitor feature in uh, uh, Dead of Winter. Alright, orderly. Reveal any time if two or less unresolved shelter cards remain on the board. Then remove this card from the game. Paranoid. Reveal any time if there are at least four weapons in storage. Then remove this card from the game. Quartermaster. Reveal after resolving the dusk phase when there are at least five food tokens, canned food, raw food, vegetable, in the storage. Then remove this card from the game. Survivalist. Reveal at the end of the campaign if no character died or abandoned the group during the entire campaign. Or reveal during the scavenger phase if a resident was killed during combat backst or backstab. Then re remove this card from the game. Alright, and lastly, Builder. Reveal any time if there are at least eight fittings built in the shelter. Then remove this card from the game. So that's the uh, hidden objectives. Alright, let's look at the sewer map cards. Uh, first up we have A. <laughs> I'm seeing these for the first time too. Uh, Alright, there's B. There's a different B with C on it. There's that D with a C. Uh, this one says, no return. The only exits from room C are the paths marked with the dotted lines. There's a different B. There's D. And sewer starting zone. Starting zone. Dark and stinky. The exit is on the fourth sewers map card placed. Roll the black die when you leave the sewers. 1 through 5, close location. 6 through 8, distant location. 9 through 10, far location. So, um, you only place four of them, apparently, according to this card. And there are two, four, six, seven sewer map cards plus the starting card. And that says sewer starting zone. So eight total cards, um, seven of which are actually sewer. 
and I guess those are underground rooms. I didn't read the rules on them, so I don't know. Alright, Heart of the City cards. There are two, four, five of these. Let's see what they say here. Uh, first one, roll the black die and check the number below. Find that number in the Heart of the City book and resolve the corresponding text. It's got three different chapters marked on it, so each one has different one, and you have to roll D10 to get any of those numbers too. So I don't know how well that's going to show up on camera, but reading it's not going to make a lot of sense, um, and my voice hurts too much, quite honestly. So if you can, just enlarge the screen, and hopefully you can see that. Uh, the next card is the same type of thing, different numbers. Yeah, they're all like this. So I'll just give you a I'll count of like five and mentally, not out loud, that'd be weird. And then uh, put the new card down. And that's the last card. So that's pretty cool. That's some new uh, adventuring stuff. Alright, so let's look at the cat and dog cards. Obviously there's one for each. The cat and the dog. The dog, we must feed it during the dusk phase. If you do not feed the dog one raw food... Slash canned food by discarding it. Roll the black die. Result one through three. The dog leaves. Remove the dog card from the game. Guard. As long as you have the dog in the shelter, you may always look at the top card of the Night Raid's deck. Well, that's good. Get him, boy. You may sacrifice the dog by removing its card from the game to automatically flee from a combat with the dog present during scavenging or ignore one Night Raid card with the dog present in the shelter during the night raid phase. So you lose the dog because he sacrifices himself for you but uh, he does let you see the night raid thing so that might save you a character or so. On the other side, um, same thing. So that's the dog card. I'll read the cat one here. Uh, it says the same thing on both sides for the cat too. Once per day at any time, roll the black die. Results 1 through 4. The cat wandered off. It'll be back tomorrow. Result 5 through 7. I always liked cats. Lower one chosen character's misery by 1. Result 8 through 10. The cat has brought something. Add one raw food to the storage. That's pretty handy. It's for the family. So the cat's a real useful one. The dog, it's kind of a sacrificial lamb. Uh, but yeah, I think the cat's probably more useful than the dog in this one, uh, overall, because he can bring you food, mostly, that you can probably feed that stupid dog with, freeloader. He's only useful when he dies. Alright, the other deck, we've got some specials, we've got alarm, we've got noise, we've got some actions, we got rooms and corridors. There's a lot of these. Um, hiding space, open space. There's a lot of those too. Uh, rooms. Corridors. Our street, these are numbered one through four. Uh, there's some new crafting fittings. Uh, these are blue, that's pretty nice. There's uh, some Orphans of War cards, there's three of those. We got some new resident cards. Um, a new night raid card. And there's two more fittings cards that are both blue. So we'll put those with the others. I don't know. 
Oh, these are for the say farmers on them. Then there's the blue ones are orphans mostly. All right, so there's a lot here. Um, where to start? Uh, let's start with um, these this um, noise. It says tactics on the bottom. So we'll look at that one first. Noise. Roll the black die. Result one. Activate the alarm card and perform a hide test. Result 2 through 5, perform a hide test. Result 6, if any enemy possesses a firearm, choose one such enemy and they perform a backstab. The shot is fired from an obscured location. Result 7, the enemy has ambushed us. The enemy performs a backstab, then begin combat. Result 8 through 10, activate the alarm card. If this group slash character leaves this space before ending the before the end of the next turn, place the noise card back. Uh, if the group slash character stays here, roll the black die again and check the noise effect. So now let's check out the alarm card. As long as this card is active, the enemies are more aware of noise. Hide minus four, noise plus two. Every time you meet an enemy, roll the black die. Result one through five, there are two enemies. At the result of each round of combat with an enemy, roll the black die. Result of one or two, an additional enemy is drawn to the noise and joins the fray. Alright, let's look at the specials. There are two of these. Special passages, uh, green dots, climb, roll the black die for each climbing character. You may use the group's slash character's prowess to re-roll the results. A lower number than the climb value, a character has fallen and suffers two wounds. A result equal to or greater, nothing happens. Uh, the red uh, exclamation uh, diamond. Clutter, perform a noise test. Uh, diamond with a padlock, cut off. When fleeing from combat, you cannot use this passage. Uh, these must apply to the sewer. Uh, special spaces. Uh, no light bulb. Darkness. Wait here. All characters and enemies. Prowess is zero. Tight spot. Looks like um, an upside down U on top of a U. Firearms have no supremacy here during combat. All attacks are performed simultaneously. Alright, let's look at the action cards. There's two of these. Careful move. Move the group character one space. Noise minus three, hide plus three. Sprint. Move the, the group character two or three spaces. Noise plus three, hide minus three. Perform a noise test. Wait. The group slash character does not move. Noise equals zero, hide plus three. If the alarm card is active, roll the black die. Results eight to ten. Set the alarm card aside. If you wish, you may try to lure the enemy by making some noise. Take and resolve the noise card. Uh, the actions list. The next card. The actions listed below may only be performed if the group slash character ends their move on a space marked with an enemy. Assault. Move the group character one or two spaces. Roll the black die. Results nine through ten. You may perform a backstab before combat. Afterwards, begin combat. During this combat, firearms do not have supremacy. Sneak up. Move the group. Slash character, one space. Noise plus five. Perform a noise test. If the enemy does not detect you, you may perform a backstab before combat. If the enemy detects you, do not resolve the noise card. Afterwards, begin combat. So those are the action cards. Alright, let's look at the rooms and corridors. Uh, there are two, four, six, seven rooms and corridors cards. Rooms and corridors. We almost stumbled upon them. Perform a hide test. Afterwards, shuffle this card back into the deck. Rooms and corridors. Psst. 
Perform a noise test. Afterwards, shuffle back into the deck. Someone is close. Mark an enemy on an adjacent space. Afterwards, shuffle back into the deck. Uh, I heard something. Roll the black die. Mark an enemy on any space in the distance determined by the result. Result of 1 through 4, 4 spaces away. 5 through 6, 3 spaces away. 7 through 8, 2 spaces away. A 9 or a 10 on an adjacent space. Then shuffle this back into the deck. Nothing happens. Shuffle back into the deck. Nothing happens. Shuffle back into the deck. And a third, nothing happens. Shuffle back into the deck. What I kind of don't like about these cards aren't noted as being part of the Kickstarter, so if you bought this used and these were included, you wouldn't know you're getting the Kickstarter stuff or which one's which, which is one of the reasons I make these videos. So, uh, let's look at another uh, deck of cards here. We've got a Night Raid, a new Night Raid, just one. Uh, farmers uh, marked in the corner. Desperate people. Damage. Any two tokens starting with starting with yellow tokens. Wounds. Three. Or if you roll no combat dice for the guards. Uh, damage. Any eight tokens starting with yellow tokens. Wounds. Zero. Afterwards, shuffle this back into the night raids deck. So you're either taking three wounds or eight damage and no wounds. Um, that's pretty rough. And of course it's got your number code at the bottom. Alright, uh, let's look at the residence cards and see what we've got for new residents. we got two here. We've got village folk. A group of people is dragging some bags behind them. Even the, their eyes are hopelessly empty. Uh, they look well fed. They must be new in town. You may perform a trade, see journal, trade sheet, to exchange any tokens from the findings pile for any green tokens, trade commission of one. Afterwards, shuffle this card back into the residence deck. Desperate people. Uh, we encounter a new group of local farmers plundering the area. The conversation is really tense. Determine the number of desperate people encountered. Roll the black die. 1 through 3, 1. 4 through 8, 2. 9 through 10, 3. And draw their tokens. Uh, they're armed with A, nothing, B, knife, C, hatchet. Choose one of the characters present and roll the black die. If the result is greater than their empathy, uh, combat begins automatically. See journal combat sheet. If there is no combat, you may return one exploration card to trade with them. See 355. If there is combat, you may stop the fight. See number 880. After defeating all enemies, see number 33. Afterwards, shuffle this card into the residence deck. Alright, so we've got a loot and farmer problem out here. Let's look at the Orphans of War cards. Uh, there are three of these. What do they say on the back here? Uh, Orphans of War. During setup, draw one Orphans of War card and place it near the other characters. Add all the children's fitting cards into the fittings deck. Uh, place the kid actions next to, I'm um, sorry, deck near the board. Alright, so happiness, kids. Uh, three is circled out of five. Uh, starting happiness, three. Lower their happiness by one whenever they are not fed. Two vegetables, one raw food, one canned food during the dusk phase. Alright, so they kind of eat a lot of vegetables. Any character dies or abandons the group. Any character suffers wounds during the night phase. At happiness zero, see case six in the Orphans of War book. That can't be good. So feed the kids. Happiness, girl. Uh, starting happiness three, lower her happiness by one whenever she is not fed one vegetable, one raw food, or one canned food during the dusk phase. Any character dies or abandons the group. Any character suffers wounds during the night raid phase. Any character becomes miserable level three. Happiness is zero, see K2 in the Orphans of War book. And happiness, boy. Uh, 3210, happiness starting is 2, lower his happiness by 1 whenever 
He is not fed one vegetable, one raw food, or one canned food during the dusk phase. Any character suffers wounds during the night raid phase. Happiness 0, CK4, and the Orphans of War book. Alright, so bad stuff's gonna happen if anything, if somebody dies, or, you know, you don't want the kids suffering, that's gonna lead to depressing entries in that book, I'm sure. Alright, so let's look at the rooms deck. We've got two, four, six of these. First one says, A, nothing happens. B, reality impact. Reveal the top card of the rooms deck and check the red number. Find that number in the sewers book and resolve the corresponding text. C. Heap. Draw and resolve one findings card heap chart. Ignore the reality impact card. Do not roll for special findings. D. Rats. You may try to catch one. Perform a backstab. See journal combat sheet. If the character pre present deals three or more wounds, they manage to catch and kill something that might be edible after proper preparation. Add one raw food to the findings pile. Afterwards, shuffle back into the deck. How does a rat have three wounds? What kind of super mutant rat is that? Alright, next card. A, somebody's here. Draw and resolve a resonance card. Ignore a reality impact card. You may safely retreat, uh, which means you ignore the resonant card. Or you may attack first, perform a backstab, see journal, combat sheet. B, trash heap. You may search the heap or ignore it and continue on. If you search it, draw and resolve one findings card, heap chart. Ignore a reality impact card. Do not roll for special findings. Afterward, roll the black die. Result, one, choose one character present and raise their illness by one. C, nothing happens. D, broken machinery. Add two weapons parts, one mechanical part and one electrical part to the findings pile. Afterwards, shuffle this back into the rooms deck. Alright, next one. A, reality impact. Reveal the top card of the rooms deck and check the blue number. Find that number in the sewers book and resolve the corresponding text. B, nothing happens. C, hidden stash. Draw and resolve one findings card, furniture chart, and ignore a reality impact card. Do not roll for special findings. D. Cesspool. If you risk going further, roll the gray combat die for each character present. Character may use their prowess to re-roll the results. If at least one wound is rolled, see the fatigue, set their fatigue to four instead. Afterwards, shuffle back to the rooms deck. So the sewer's gross. Alright, next card. A. Overdue food. Up to two chosen characters may lower their hunger by one, but each of them must raise their misery by one. Uh, B. Nothing happens. C. Reality impact. Reveal the top card of the room's deck and check the green number. Find the number in the sewers book and resolve the corresponding text. D. Encounter. Draw and resolve a residence card. Ignore the reality impact card. Afterwards, shuffle this card back into the, the room's deck. Next we have A, exit. You may immediately exit the sewers to any of the three locations. Uh, B, nothing happens. C, filth. Raise the illness of each wounded, unbandaged character present by one. D, reality impact. Reveal the top card of the rooms deck and check the black number. Find that number in the sewers book and resolve the corresponding text. Afterwards, shuffle this card back into the rooms deck. And lastly, A, Rotten Corpse. Roll the black die and compare the result with the empathy of each character present. A result equal to or less than the character's empathy raise their misery by one. B, Rats. You may try to catch one, perform a backstab, see journal, combat sheet. If the character present deals three or more wounds, they manage to catch and kill something that might be edible after proper preparation. Add one raw food to the findings pile. C. Poisonous Vapors. Choose one character present and raise their illness by one. D. Nothing happens. Afterward, shuffle this card back into the rooms deck. Alright. Let's look at the corridors pile. Uh, this deck has two, four, six cards. First one. Uh, one. Nothing happens. Two, Poisonous Vapors. Choose one character present 
and raise their illness by one. C. Fence. A wire net blocks the way. Ripping through it will take cost a lot of time. Remember, you will start exploring the location with two cards less. 4. Reality Impact. Reveal the top card of the Corridor's deck and check the black number. Find that number in the Sewer's book and resolve the corresponding text. Afterwards, shuffle this card back into the Corridor's deck. The next Sewer Corridors is uh, 1. Reality Impact. Reveal the top card of the Corridor's deck and check the blue number. Find the number in the Sewer's book and resolve the corresponding text. 2. Nothing Happens. 3. Someone is in the shadows. Draw and resolve a residence card. Ignore a reality impact card in case of a backstab, uh, i.e. when you flee. You suffer two wounds less. Uh, 4. Narrow tunnel. If the characters are carrying tokens weighing two or more, discard one token weighing two or more, or choose one character present and raise their fatigue by two. Afterward, shuffle this card back into the character or the corridor's deck. Next card. 1. Nothing happens. 2. Murmurs. If you risk going further, roll the black die. Result of 1 through 4. Draw and resolve a residence card. Ignore the reality impact card. Result of 5 to 10. Nothing happens. Uh, 3. Reality impact. Tr reveal the top card of the corridor's deck and check the green number. Find that number in the sewer's book and resolve the corresponding text. 4. Difficult passage. Desi decide how to pass, carefully or quickly, and resolve the black die for each character present. Passing carefully, result 1 through 3, plus 1 fatigue. 4 through 10, nothing happens. Passing quickly, result of 1 is plus 1 wound. 2 through 10, nothing happens. Afterwards, shuffle this card back into the corridor's deck. Next we have uh, exhaustion on 1. Roll the black die. Result of 1 through 3, choose one character present and raise their fatigue by 1. Result of 4 through 10, nothing happens. 2. Rats. You may try to catch one. Perform a backstab. See journal combat sheet. If the characters present uh, uh, deal 3 or more wounds, they manage to catch and kill something that might be edible after proper preparation. Add one raw food to the findings pile. 3. Something is in the wall. Add three mechanical parts and one electrical part to the findings pile. Four, nothing happens. Afterwards, shuffle this card back into the corridor's deck. Uh, next we have uh, one, water. Add two water to the findings pile. Two, darkness. Rolled black die. Result of one to two. One chosen character present suffers one wound. Result of three to ten, nothing happens. Uh... Number three, nothing happens. Four, stench. It was dark and damp and the stench was unbearable. Choose one character present and raise their misery by one. Afterwards, shuffle this card back into the corridor's deck. And lastly, one, nothing happens. Two, reality impact. Reveal the top card of the corridor's deck and check the red number. Find that number in the sewer's book and resolve the corresponding text. Three, hidden path. If you follow it, choose a character present and roll the black die. 1 through 4, that character suffers 2 wounds. Result of 5 to 10, you may immediately exit to any of the 3 locations. 4. Squeeze through. Roll the gray combat die for each character present. The characters may use their prowess to re-roll the results to determine if and how many wounds they suffer. Afterwards, shuffle this card back into the corridor's deck. Alright, next we'll check the hiding space open space. Alright, there are two, four, six, seven of these cards. The first one is Hiding Space. Someone passed, perform a hide test. If the enemy does not detect you, you may perform a backstab before combat. Open Space. We almost stumbled upon them. Perform a hide test. Afterwards, shuffle this card back into its deck. Hiding Space. Someone passed, perform a hide test. Uh, if the enemy does not detect you, you may perform a backstab before combat. Open space. Psst. Perform a noise test. Afterwards, shuffle back into the deck. Hiding space. I heard something. Roll the black die. Mark an enemy on any space in the distance determined by the result. Result of 1 through 4, 4 spaces away. 5 to 6 is 3 spaces away. A 7 or 8 
is two spaces away, nine to ten, on an adjacent space. Open space, nothing happens. Hiding space, nothing happens. Or, if the alarm card is active, the enemies are carefully searching every inch of the place, and finally their search brings them here. Perform a hide test. Open space, nothing happens. Afterwards, shuffle back into the deck. Hiding space, nothing happens. Or if the alarm is active, the enemies are carefully searching every inch of the place and their findings bring them here. Perform a hide test. Open space, someone is close. Mark an enemy on an adjacent space. If you are carrying a firearm, you may immediately fire upon the enemy. Perform a backstab, see journal combat sheet, but only with a firearm. If you performed a backstab, immediately start the next turn. With this group slash character, you must either perform a three space sprint or begin combat with the enemy that was fired upon. Afterwards, shuffle back into the deck. Next we have hiding space, nothing happens. Open space, someone is close. Mark an adjacent space. If you are carrying a firearm, you may immediately fire upon the enemy, perform a backstab, see journal combat sheet, but only with a firearm. If you performed a backstab, immediately start the next turn. With this group character, you must perform a three space sprint or begin combat with the enemy that was fired upon. Afterwards, shuffle this card back into the deck. And lastly, hiding space, nothing happens. Open space, I heard something. Roll the black die. Mark an enemy on any space in the distance determined by the result. On a result of 1, 4, it's 4 spaces away. Result of 5 or 6, 3 spaces away. Result of 7 or 8 is 2 spaces away. And a result of 9 or 10 on an adjacent space. Afterwards, shuffle this card back into its deck. Alright, so that's all the um, hiding space open space cards. Next we'll have Our Street. There's four of these, numbered one, two, three, and four. So we'll start with Our Street number one. And that is morning. At the beginning of each morning phase, roll the black die. Result of one or, one or two, place one soldier figure on the outside space or on the findings pile. Result of three or four, place one thug figure on the outside space or on the findings pile. Result of 5 or 6, place one farmer figure on the outside space or on the findings pile. Result of 7, nothing happens. Result of 8, discard one farmer figure. Result of 9, discard one thug figure. Result of 10, discard one soldier figure. Our street number 2. Outside. During the outside action, after rolling the sniper hit, for the sniper hit, but before drawing a visitor card, roll the black die. If the result is equal to or less than the number of farmer figures placed on the outside space, you meet some farmers with whom you may trade. You may buy any green tokens from them. See journal trade sheet. Trade commission of zero. Our street number three. Scavenging. At the end of the scavenging phase, but before choosing the choose finding stage, roll the black die. If the result is equal to or less than the number of thug figures on the findings pile, find a thug's card in the residence deck and resolve it. If the result is equal to or less than the number of a soldier figure on the findings pile, find a soldier card in the resident deck and resolve it. Uh, if the result is equal to or lower than the number of soldier figures and the number of thug figures, choose and resolve either a thug's or soldier card. And lastly, our street number four. Night Raid. Roll the black die immediately after drawing a Night Raid card. If the result is equal to or less than the number of soldier figures on the outside space, ignore this Night Raid card and remove one thug figure from the outside space. Each soldier figure on the outside space raises the damage of each night raid card by one. Each thug figure on the outside space raises the wounds of each night raid card by one. Alright. And our last cards are the crafting. Now, two of these are marked as farmer, and the rest are marked as orphan. So let's do the two farmer ones first. 
The orphan cards are six. So, all right, build a rooftop garden. During setup, place this card on the board on the highest floor instead of any chosen rubble card. Rooftop garden. Grow vegetables. Two chems. Place a weight token here and roll black die. Result of one, the character placed here suffers two wounds from a sniper hit. <laughs> um, when the weight tokens are resolved, roll the black die and consult the table below. Adding the amount of vegetables to storage. Result of one to two, one vegetable. Result of three to five, two vegetables. Result of six through ten is three vegetables. Bringing the goat in. During setup, place this card on the board instead of any chosen furniture card. You may start the game without any water. Oh, you start the game without any water in the storage. Goat. Get some milk. One vegetable plus one water uh, yields lower two chosen characters' hunger by one. Kill the goat. Set the hunger of all characters to zero and add six raw food to the storage. Then roll the goat. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Then roll the black die and compare the result with each character's empathy. A result that is equal to or less than a character's empathy equals raise their misery by one. After remove afterwards, remove the goat card from the game. You only get one goat. That's all there is in the whole city. All right. Let's look at the orphan fittings. Like I said, there's six of these. And see what you craft here. Make some toys. One mechanical part, one book, one wood, two components. After crafting the toys, raise the happiness by one and draw one kid action card. That's pretty cool. Toys, toy stories. Roll the black die and compare the results with the empathy of the character placed here. You may roll the die twice and choose the better result. A result that is equal to or less than the character's empathy equals raise the happiness by one. A result that is greater than the character's empathy, remove this card from the game. That's depressing. Build a bike. One weapon part, one mechanical part, two components. After crafting the bike, draw one kid action card. Learning to ride. Roll the, the black die and compare the results with the empathy of the character placed here. A result that is equal to or less than this character's empathy equals raise the happiness by one. A result that is greater than this character's empathy, remove this card from the game. Place a kid's room. During setup, place this card on the board instead of one chosen heap card. Talk and play. Roll the black die and compare the results with the empathy of the characters placed here. A result that is equal to or less than this character's happy empathy uh, or equals raise happiness by one. Can only be used once per day. Build a magic room. Three books. A different world. Roll the black die and compare the results with the empathy of the characters placed here. Or the character placed here. You may roll the die twice and choose the better result. A result that is equal to or less than the character's empathy equals raise the happiness by one. It can only be used once per day. Build a comfortable bed. Three wood, two components. Sweet dreams. During the dawn phase, roll the black die. Result of 7 through 10, raise the happiness by 1. Build a cardboard fort. Five wood, two components. After crafting the cardboard fort, raise the happiness by 2 and draw one kid action card. Uh, play in the fort. Roll the black die and compare the result with the empathy of the character placed here. A result that is equal to or less than the character's empathy equals raise the happiness by one and lower this character's misery by one. A result that is greater than the character's empathy equals remove this card from the game. Alright. That is the last of the cards. Um, there's some pretty interesting stuff here that can really change the course of the game. Uh, there's quite a few cards with the Kickstarter stuff. So I'm actually really surprised about that. Uh, the minis are pretty nice. Uh, they definitely impact the game significantly. So uh, I really like the addition of the cat and dog. I think that could really be a, a game changer in a lot of ways. 
but uh, that's really about it. We've looked at everything that's uh, included with the stretch goals um, for this War of Mine. And uh, that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, as always, thank you for watching and supporting the channel. Uh, if you're interested, please check out the trailer for my books at the end because that really is uh, very helpful to getting and acquiring new games. But that'll do it for this episode. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll hopefully see you on the next episode.